across the street today from the St. Mary's and Maximum Church, outside the Richmond Hill Performing Arts Center. And uh, we're going to go inside today. The United Way is hosting a luncheon and an information session. So uh, we're going to go check it out. region that respects its partners and that talks to its partners and whether that is employers who we also consider our partners or the United Way is our partners we do talk to each other sometimes like in any families those conversations aren't always comfortable it's not always good news there are issues that you need to talk about but the most important thing is to have the conversation and to have an honest conversation and I think that that's always a good thing we also know that some of our families struggle. Luckily, that's a minority percentage population, but we do have families and individuals who struggle, who need some extra support. They have challenges. But we also know that our employers sometimes have a hard time too. There's global competition, the markets are changing, the workforce is changing, and I think we can acknowledge that it's pretty hard to keep on top of that, to stay competitive, to keep employing the people you're employing when there are always wolves at the door, it seems. So it, it's, it's, harder, it's harder than ever for families in some cases, but harder than ever for employers as well. I think given all the conversations we've been having around these things, I was actually very nicely reassured this morning through through the things that we were talking about and I started to think about all the great things that York Region is doing, not that I or we take sole credit for all of this, but given some of the challenges that our employers are facing and given some of the challenges that our families are facing, I was actually pretty proud to be part of York Region and all the things that we're doing to try to address some of these issues. So if I think of, indulge me for just a minute, our economic action plan, helping with our economy, helping our employers. And I noticed my colleague over there, Doug Lindblom, who's a key part of that, helping to develop our economic strategy here in New York region. So we are doing that. We are working very hard on the issue of affordable <coughs> housing. Market, we have a shortage of rental, subsidized housing. We are building, we've got actually in our history, more than ever units on the go that are under development. We've opened two homelessness shelters in the last little while with transitional supports. We've got the Human Services Planning Board. We all know that it's all about solving problems together and you need everybody growing in a certain direction to do that. So we've got planning bodies that are focused on that. We have an immigration settlement strategy that is looking at people who have a harder time, perhaps marginalized groups, perhaps face discrimination. We want them to be part of the community as well, and we have a strategy that's trying to address that. Child care, keep hearing over and over and over again about child care, the importance to supporting whoever's in employment, whether it's precarious or, or full-time and stable and everything else. Child care is so critical and very, very key. And we are doing a lot with that, and fortunately we have partners at the province who understand the issues in York Region and have worked with us very hard at hearing our voice and providing us with new child care dollars over the last little while. So I'd like to brag just a little bit that our waiting list has never been lower for child care and we are serving far more people in providing that support and that service than are on our waiting list. And that actually hasn't happened before. So, and we know that the people that are in our waiting list, they don't need the child care right now. They actually need it down the road. So, we are getting better and better at Human providing those support. support. Everything. United Way Toronto and York Region is proud to partner in this community. Because we know when we work with the Human Service Planning Board, when we work with elected officials, many of you here today, our community agencies, our labor partners. We know that not only are we telling and sharing and hearing new stories, we are actually doing work. 
much of which Adelina already spoke of. Generating innovative solutions in a region that is changing rapidly. We've always said we have an abundance of work and coordination happening here. What we lack is the York Region story. And United Way Toronto and York Region is so proud that we're able to tell one portion of that story with you today. I think safe to say that uh, basically what we find is that employment precarity has uh, a number of social and community and individual impacts that uh, have negative outcomes for uh, the people who are engaged in precarity. Basically what we're talking about here uh, is uh, some of the good work that's actually happening in York Region. So that's another good indicator that we can make change successfully in York Region. A large part of it is about thinking about how we build a strong workforce development system. That's connecting employers with government, with community service providers, and with the people who are looking for jobs. Ensuring that the training routes and the career paths are the right kinds of paths that will create security, uh, either through more permanent and secure work, or through more secure work that's enabled across multiple employers as well. We can't simply get rid of uh, some, of the, some of the insecurity in that sense, but we want to try to find ways to make that insecurity have fewer negative outcomes. We also need a lot more information about the labour market, uh, especially at a regional and sub-regional levels. We simply don't have that data in Canada available to uh, employers or to, or to uh, individuals looking for jobs uh, or to uh, service providers who are trying to support individuals who are The thrust of the, of the research, uh, and very much was driven by observations by United Way Toronto, some of their earlier research, um, is that the labour market was changing and there's just abundant evidence that the labor market today doesn't look, look like it did in the 1970s and in the 1980s. And then in many ways, employment is uh, more fragile. Uh, regardless of where you are on, uh, in the form of the employment, it's, 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 it's different than it was in the 1970s when people could have uh, a lifetime, lifetime income. And there are a number of reasons for that. You know, a shift from manufacturing to the service sector, uh, a shift in the knowledge sector where much work is, is project-based. Uh, increasing use of uh, freelancers, contract employment, etc. All of them meant, meant people are now employed under uh, different kinds of conditions. And what we wanted to try and understand are what are the social implications of that? Uh, what does it mean for families and what does it mean for communities? And that's what our reports uh, focused on. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, how York looks in terms of, of those kinds of questions relative to the region as a whole. So uh, the study itself, what did we do? Uh, we did, uh, we uh, hired Leger Marketing to administer a survey for Discrimination us. is uh, an issue that we were seeing uh, more prevalence in precarious employment. And again, we shouldn't be surprised at that. If you're in precarious employment, you're, you're, you're entering the labor market multiple times. You're always having to renegotiate, renegotiate a job. And each time you enter the labor market is a moment when you can experience discrimination. Uh, whereas if you're in a permanent job, once you get into it, you expect to hold it. And so again, if you're in precarious employment, you're far more likely to tell us uh, you're facing some sort of discrimination. In large part, this is a result of race, but not only as a result of race. It's also a, 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 a result of the, of the insecurity of your employment and the vulnerability that, that makes, uh, makes you face in terms I, uh, of discrimination. I graduated from Brock University with a degree in Film and Media Studies in 2011. And uh, since then, I've been through five contract positions, uh, worked in three unpaid internship positions, and it's taken its toll on anxiety levels and stress, uh, just the uncertainty of, of everything, um, and uh, not knowing what's going to happen. in the next few years. My generation is only getting short-term contract assignment jobs. I haven't been able to get full-time work since 2012. I was wondering, since the wages being paid are not so much, more than $13, why can't the rent be capped for three years into the economy rate? So if my rent goes up anymore right now, I will have to decide either to eat or shelter myself. It's that bad out there. I've applied every week for jobs to get extra money. I haven't heard back from any employer, even by following up. Please send me your thoughts. I'm working on a short-term assignment that will end at the end of the month. My landlord uh, wants to increase my rent. How can that work on temp assignments? And I, I read this because I think, like Patrick, it's, it's the, these, these real-life examples. I mean, the data tells us a story. Our focus at the Human Services Planning Board on the modern government. In the United Way, the Human Services Planning Board, and many people in this room who participated in so many ways, advocacy, uh, outreach, media, 
made a difference. And, and we can make a difference on this issue too, and I know we will, working together United Way, the Human Services Planning Board, and everybody in this room. We can do it. We've done it before, we'll do it again. Thanks very much. It's been a great day. The Human uh, Services Planning Board has further uh, work to do uh, on this. Uh, there's further work being done by uh, uh, the United Way of uh, <coughs> Toronto and York Region uh, together with KPMG. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, thoughts and ideas that have come forward uh, this morning as well as uh, from our uh, discussion this afternoon. So I'd like to thank uh, all the, the members of, uh, of, of the panel for, uh, for their time in, in participating. And uh, particularly to all of you for uh, coming on what might be one of the first real spring uh, <laughs> Friday afternoons to uh, to share in this discussion and certainly uh, we've we've got a lot to do and uh, there's a, a lot more to be done and we will be talking about this again and, and hopefully coming up with some new actions. Thank you. <laughs> So it was a great start for the precarious employment, as you saw the United Way uh, put together a great little uh, show of strength, if you will, here, supporters in the community, look forward to seeing what's coming up in the future. Tom Pearson, work news and events, until next time. Located right next door to the uh, Richmond Hill Performing Arts Center. You can come and uh, ask some refreshments at Cover Notes before or after your event and check out a historic old school built in the 1800s. Very cool. Cover Notes, Richmond Hill. Just like Newmarket, but not. It's like it was yesterday. It was a Sunday afternoon in June. I was 10 years old, school had just ended. We had just finished our 12 course Sunday afternoon lunch. It was about 3.30 and I was getting ready for my snack. <laughs> Tiny Talent Time, remember Tiny Talent Time? It's back now, it was playing, and I cracked open this book that I had picked up on Saturday at the library. It was a pirate book. Just as I'm about to start to read the short stories in the pirate book, my father walks in, and he says, you think you're gonna sit around all summer and read stories? <laughs>